three. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, for their favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And for this week's roundtable, I'm excited. We've got the Big Papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa, Tate Litchfield. Tate, how are you? I'm doing well. Happy to be on the podcast again. Same here. We've got the irascible Eric Peterson. What's up, Eric? Nothing much. Just uh, hanging out with you guys. We love it. I know, you know, Eric's got to jump off uh, a little short on this round table. So we're going to pick on him as much as possible uh, before he jumps off. We've got the Bearland Gurr. Bearland Gurr. A big roar to everybody. What's up? We've got the terrorist hunter. She's the scariest woman in the country, Mimi Schmidt. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Hi, Mimi. Hi. Are we safer? Uh, today? Yeah, I think so. Uh, New software. Works better. That's good. Breathing yeah. in the mailing. Breathing out the marketing. The Zen master, Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? Doing phenomenal. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And then last but not least, you know, you love him. Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com, and the automation man himself, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Start automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings. We got a lot to talk about today about table people. Um, let's just get into it. Why? Here's the topic. Why don't we use paid traffic for our marketing? Why don't we teach it? Why do we go to these other sort of more organic routes? Why not from the very outset start using paid traffic? Because let's face it, we can all list the benefits of paid traffic, right? It's not, if you, if you lock down paid traffic and you have paid leads coming in every single day, right? Your business won't be lumpy. It'll just be consistent. It's like a money machine. Why not do that? Tate Litchfield, why don't we teach paid ads? Google AdWords, Facebook ads, YouTube ads. Bring in those leads, man. You know, I, I think the first thing that you got to recognize is it's not the cost, right? There is a cost associated with paid traffic, but that's not the primary reason why, you know, I personally don't focus on paid traffic. The main reason for me is, number one, it takes a lot of time to narrow in on that audience that you want to target. And if you're not targeting the right people, well, you're throwing good money after bad. And so I think, I think there's a lot to do with that. Um, you know, it's just, it, it, it's difficult to do correctly. That, okay. That's a good answer. Eric Peterson, why aren't you doing Google AdWords? Six bucks, six bucks a, uh, a click, you know, bid, so, bid on those, bid on those AdWords, man. Yeah, land, I think, land I think that, uh, raw land. it's, it sounds really good, right? Um, you know, you can spend pennies and, and bring people to your website or to a specific property. But the fact of the matter is you have to be very precise, very targeted, and um, really know what you're doing to do it right. I mean, it's so easy to spend a hundred bucks, 50 bucks, whatever it is, and just spend it all in a couple of days and have no results. I think Probably most of us have played around with with play, uh, paid traffic on occasion, um, but I mean it's it's a whole skill set in and of itself ultimately, and um, I think that it's it's probably more easy to waste your money doing that um, than it is to you know I just feel like your money spent better in other areas. I guess. Yeah. I mean, Bearland Aaron, you ever played with any paid traffic, AdWords, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Instagram ads? It's um, Banner not, ads? not with the land business, but with other things I have. Um, I, I didn't have a lot of luck with them. Honestly, um, I reached a ton of people and can't really speak for any major result that ended in a sale, you know? And I think, um, like everybody said that it requires so much targeting and finding that right person that not that it can't be done, but there's people that build whole businesses around that, you know, and I don't want to be in the 
um, the SEO ad targeting business. I want to be in the land business, you know? So um, in order to do that, you know, you almost need to hire somebody and then it actually is an expense issue, you know, to do it right. Um, because you're not just paying for the ads, you're paying for somebody who's spent years gaining the knowledge to do that right. And for the certain kind of business, that might be the way to go. Drive them to your website where the website can sell them on a product and they can click through and buy it and so forth. But, you know, honestly, we want to get people on the phone. We want to have a conversation with them and we want to, you know, sell to them on a one-to-one -one basis in the way they want to be sold, you know, by them telling us what their hot buttons are and so forth. And really that's tough to do by just driving them to your website. You know, we really don't sell on our website. Um, it happens, but that's not the purpose. You know, we want to get them, you know, we want to have a relationship with them and that's, um, it's tough to do effectively while doing the AdWords and the, the paid advertisements, you know, the other routes we take are much more effective at our goals in this land business. Absolutely. Mimi, how come you're not spending a thousand dollars a month on paid ads? Well, I was spending money and uh, on land and farm and that was a waste, right? And so <laughs> honestly, what's the purpose now? If I can generate all kinds of ads through Craigslist or le leads through Craigslist and more leads than I can manage in Facebook, what's the point? And as a business owner, my goal is to hire SME, subject matter experts, to, to do these things for me. So just like I have a SME that does ad posting for Craigslist, if I want a SME for paid ads on Facebook, I'll just go get a Land Moto subscription. And have Scott, who's specializing in that, he can go do that for me. And I'll just get the subscription and leave that, that, that uh, expertise on how to focus those ads to a particular market to someone who knows it better than myself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree a hundred percent. I mean, Zen master Mike, why don't you just, you know, meditate on it and spend a couple of thousand bucks and, and start making millions of dollars on paid ads. Easy. It looks like it's so easy. Well, I think there's a lot of things out there that seem easy, right? But I think it's a quality versus quantity. I think that, um, I think Mimi hit it the head, hit it right on the head. You know, it's like we have so many leads that we can, uh, to keep up with our salespeople through just traditional Craigslist and doing things of our own efforts. I don't, I, I think it's a quality and quantity. Um, I, I don't know how well that would work for us, honestly. And uh, what we're doing works very well. It, it produces a ton of sales. So I, I don't know. I just don't see the need for it. I, I don't, I don't know. It, it incredibly, I'm not going to act like I'm an expert on that stuff. I'm definitely not, but I know that what we do works really well and gives us more leads than uh, we can pretty much handle almost, right? Uh, through the, uh, you know, posting on Craigslist and a kind of, uh, um, yeah, so quality, quantity. I don't, I don't know if that necessarily would work for us. Yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, why don't, why don't you spend 10 grand a month on paid <laughs> ads? You're going to get a 10 extra turn. It's 100 grand. It's just like a money machine. Very easy to do. Run a campaign. Just do some A-B testing. How hard can it be? Everyone's doing it. Well, Mark, um, unfortunately, when it comes to like real estate or land, I don't, I, I kind of disagree because what happens is those names that you're getting, they're cold traffic, right? They don't know you. They're, you just interrupted their day. It's a pattern interrupt. And when you pattern interrupt somebody who's not even thinking about land, now what you need to do is you need to warm them up to like why they even want to buy land. I mean, just, just imagine like, you know, you're, you, I mean, you, you put a billboard on the side of the road, Hey, buy land. And someone's like, I don't want to buy land. But then you're like, wait, you got to buy land. And the next billboard says, wait, you got to buy land because one, two, three is all these great things. And now you might've attracted someone's attention, but it doesn't mean that they're going to convert into a buyer. You see, there's, there's a, it, it, there's a warm up period that goes in there. So what you have to do is you have to find to me in my experience, you have to find where the, the warm leads are. Where are the people that are interested in land? Where are they at today? Then go and jump in front of that traffic as opposed to kind of just jump in, in front of them anywhere. Uh, it doesn't mean that you, you won't have some success, but essentially what's going to happen is you're going to spend money. You're going to have to tweak your message 
you, I mean, you could buy the leads very cheaply, but you know what? Like I, I, I'm going to admit last summer I did this program where, uh, I, I did this thing and I don't even want to talk about it because it was like a disaster, but I got like all of these email addresses and I can tell you that all these email addresses are basically garbage. Okay. Like they're, they're garbage. And so I wasted about a month trying to get all these email addresses. It's not there. So where what I'm doing is now I'm building that traffic. I'm building that warm traffic. I'm kind of finding them. I'm getting them agitated, their problem agitated. I'm going back to kind of, you know, copyright one-on-one agitate their problem a little bit. And then bam, all of a sudden now you have a warm lead. that's someone that wants to buy, but you need to know your metrics. You need to know your, your cost. You need to know like, you know, what, what your conversion rate is. And it's easy to say, well, let's just tweak the conversion. Let's just tweak the conversion. It's not about tweaking the conversion. It's about truly knowing what that customer is going to convert to in terms of dollars. And then uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not simple math. It's a, it's a lot more than that. Right. So, so you really hit it on the head, right? And that is what's your conversion rate. And if you're starting off, you don't know your conversion rate. So essentially, are you willing to spend thousands upon thousands of dollars for cold traffic that won't convert? You will lose money. Guaranteed you'll lose money. And, and Scott said it again, it's cold. They don't know you. So now are you willing to invest a lot of, you know, let's say maybe 50 grand on a copywriter that's there's still no guarantee that they'll be able to warm up your traffic enough. So your best option then if you're starting out is to go where the leads are and they're on platforms. People are looking for land on Craigslist. Show it to them. It doesn't cost anything. They're looking for leads on Facebook marketplace. Show it to them. It doesn't cost anything. If they're doing a search on Google, and you want to do a Google AdWord, you better know your conversion rate. You better be willing to lose lots of money up front to have this back end where you're going to make money. Nobody is going to buy a piece of property from you cold that's $5,000, $10,000. I'll buy a $40 gadget that you know they've targeted me on Facebook. Sure, I'll do an impulse buy on Facebook. I might go to a webinar on Facebook, but I'm not going to spend anything more than that on Facebook ads. Uh, certainly not Google AdWords. When's the last time you, you did a search on Google and bought something from a sponsored ad? Here, take, I think, like I think you, you can get traffic that way, right? Like you can get traffic, Mark, but I think you kind of, what you just said too is, uh, where, where's the dollar? This is not an e-commerce play. You know, someone, right. someone's not going to go to a website and buy, buy something that costs, I mean, I don't care, like, you know, whether it's, whether it's $1,000 or, you know, um, $10,000, $20,000. They're not just going to go, oh, there's an ad, boom, let me just spend $10,000, $20,000. Even though you're asking for $100, $500 down, that's not the way that it works. In fact, I would just challenge everybody listening to this podcast, when was the last time you looked at an information product? Let's just say it was $250 or $500. You didn't just go $500, no problem, boom. No, what did you do? You researched it, you Googled it, you went back to it 10 times, 20 times. You, you did all this stuff. They probably retargeted you. It took you some time to build. And that's what, like a $1,000 course or a $1,000 piece of, of uh, in investment? What would you do for 10? Yeah, it, 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 exactly. So for as long as I've been doing this, I've never run paid ads because I'd rather put my money on the platforms that are already spending millions of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars to bring in the traffic that I want. So why on earth would I spend a dollar on paid traffic to come to front for people to come to frontier properties that don't know me, don't like me and don't trust me. I might as well throw a bonfire in the backyard and start burning money. It would, at least that would be more practical because I'd generate some heat. So, so Mark, now in, in all honesty and in transparency, Landmoto does run paid ads. 
Okay. Now and they, I, and they should. That's a platform. Yeah, that's a platform, right? Now, what I what I did was before Land Moto was a platform, I did that. Like I did paid traffic. Okay. And you may not have the volume that you need to support it. And I would tell you that even today, Land Moto still doesn't have the volume to support because guess what? We get we get people that are looking for ads or land in like Pennsylvania, Michigan like places that we don't cover. And even though you even target like a certain state and you, you, you know, you geocode it, you do all this other stuff, they still find their way to you. And they're like, what? And then it's like, if you could just hear this big, like toilet flushing, whoosh, right? Because I don't have anything there today. The bounce rate, you just see like when they go there and it's not there, the just go look at your analytics. Look at the bounce rate of your website. Bounce rate, they hit it and then they go. That's the bounce rate, right? Like Land Moto used to be, like before we were a platform, the Land Moto bounce rate was like 60%. Today it's down to four because we're getting better, we're getting, we're getting coverage. But 4% bounce rate, that means they hit the website and then they left immediately, boom, boom, okay? Like if you don't have what they're looking for on a pay-per-click, they're just not gonna leave an email address. They're going to leave and whoosh, there goes the money. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like we all know, the people who make the most money online are the people teaching other people how to make money online. <laughs> Marketing is this multi-billion dollar business. And the bottom line is because nobody knows. And so it's always changing and they're always trying new things and they're saying, and they can always come up with a case study. Well, this company did X, Y, and Z, but you're not that company. You don't know what their copy is. You don't know what their conversion rate is. You don't know what their product is. You don't know what their offer is. Until you know all these metrics, maybe you've got a million in revenue. That's the only way I would even start to think about doing paid ads. Once you get to a million in revenue, call me. And I'll be like, okay, let's talk about spending some money and doing some experiments with paid ads. It's not that I'm totally against it. It's I'm against it until you know your numbers cold and you know your offer cold. You know what it converts at and you're willing to spend the money up front to have that back end money pay off down the line, then it's fine. But in the beginning, you're better off getting a, a premium ad on Land Moto that already is paying for the traffic. Hey, what are you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna, I was gonna elaborate on that. Like, you know, marketing, it's such an ever changing process that what works today might not work tomorrow, right? You've always gotta be looking at ways to improve it, but, uh, you know, if somebody says this is guaranteed to work, you should run away from that because, you know, it's probably outdated by the time they typed it up and told you what it was. So that's why I think it's important to be, you know, cast the widest net you can. You should be on every platform. You should be on Land Moto. You should be on Craigslist. You should try any of these services that you can because you're touching as many people as possible. And I think that's the key to marketing is be everywhere. Right, right. Eric Peterson, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, just in closing, I think that, um, you know, the, the paid ad stuff works really well for, you know, little gadgets, small products, what have you, that's, you know, it's more of an impulse buy. So <clears throat> it's a lot easier to make that conversion if you have a good offer. But when we're talking about land, I mean, it's a whole different ballpark. So, you know, the most we're trying to get in that scenario is, well, ultimately a sale, but we want to get their email. But, you know, I think it's, it's still a stretch for even that. And then, you know, as Scott was talking about, you've got to warm them up over time then. And um, it's just, it's a lot of money that could be spent better elsewhere. Yeah, absolutely. I had a, a marketing guy that I hired. He was one of my mentors and he, he, I mean, I can't say the names, but he literally, he had one guy who was like, we all know who he is. He, he worked with him. And they would, their, their ad budget was um, over a million a month on Facebook. And he, this guy really knew, like, he was like one of the top people in, in the country running Facebook ads. And so I talked to him about my metrics and this and that. He's like, you're just going to waste money. <laughs> He's like, you're not ready for paid ads. I'm like, I'm not ready for paid ads? He's like, no, definitely not. He's like, you need to do this, 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 this in place. And you got to be willing to lose this much money up front to even know in experimenting what's gonna convert. He's like, are you willing to lose that much money? I'm like, no. He's like, then keep doing what you're doing and just keep warming people up 
and you're doing just fine. It's like there's there's no reason to spend good money after bad leads when you don't have all that in place. He's like, this guy has it all in place because everyone already knows him. He's a brand. So he's top of mind and it, he can convert and his products aren't expensive at all. But his, his back-end products are super expensive. So that's why it works. Mimi, what are your thoughts? I like the point about gaining trust. It's so hard for us to warm folks up, right? It's a, my biggest sales challenge is developing that rapport and that credibility. So if I can use a platform to help me get there, why wouldn't I? Why wouldn't I make that easy on myself? Exactly. Mark, uh, you, I don't want to pass by something you said and you just skimmed over just a little bit, but it's so dang important. And it's the back, you said the word back in, right? Like you see, when, when a lot of these companies, when you see their ads for something, well, you're seeing the front end, okay? Like you see, and I'm just trying to think, like, you know, let, let's say that, that you offered something that they could buy for, uh, pick the number, $19 or $9, whatever it is, or a free, something free, pay for shipping only. I mean, these, these ads are all over Facebook, right? Like, hey, buy the book. The, the book is free, pay $9, $9 for shipping. Okay, well, that $9 shipping covers the cost of the book and it covers the, the ad cost, right? That's the customer acquisition piece. But then once you, that's the top of the funnel, right? Very top. And then once you start going through the whole thing, well, then they're going to have something you can buy for $19, for $99, for, uh, you know, $497, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, $100,000, right? Like there is a whole uh, value chain that's there. And it all starts with a free book where you pay for shipping and handling. That's the way that it works. Everything. Go back to the go back to the ages when um, before the internet, and you'd you'd look at those CDs. You, you remember those CD clubs? Man, you'd get like nine CDs for a penny. Tate's like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Tate's, What's the like, Tate, first of CD? Does Tate, Tate know what a CD is? Floppy disk? Is that what you're, talking about? you're know what I'm talking about? Which is, hey, it's the Columbia House. Col Tate, Google it, Columbia I've House. I've never heard of that either. Hey, Penny, Penny gets you, what, nine CDs, and then you're on the CD of the club month, and you, gotta, you commit to buying so much, right? It's, that's the back end, but what's the front end? The front end is, oh, look, I get all these CDs for free. Yeah, but then you paid, what? You paid, like, top dollar for these CDs. And then if you forgot to check it off or close it out, guess what? You still got the crap that you didn't want. And you're like, no, no, how do I stop this thing? Okay, so yeah, you can do pay to traffic. You can do these things, but like it goes back to what we said. You better know those numbers, man, because you better know what percentage is going to upgrade, what percentage is going to do this, what percent is going to convert. Because when you don't know that, Man, just go flush your money down the toilet. It'd be more entertaining. Right. Your kids now, if, now, if you've got a you know million dollar ad budget, and you're you know you're a big land seller, and you can afford to spend that kind of money on that experiment, nothing wrong with it. It might be a great investment, but for as long as I've been doing this, I know of two companies that do Google AdWords, the and they don't spend that much uh, to drive traffic to their sites, but what they do is. Um, a lot of SEO, right? And they kind of game the system that way. And then Google changes their algorithm and then they call me crying saying business is slow for the next three months while they try to figure out the algorithm. So it's, it is not for the faint of heart. It is not for newbies. Um, even the most advanced people in this business don't do paid ads uh, for all these reasons. But maybe Mike Zeno has a different approach, Mike. No, no. I was just saying the biggest thing that I'm taking away from this, and I think everybody else will, is leverage your time and money, right? Um, do to something like Landmoto. Let them do all that uh, uh, paid traffic and just reap the benefits of it. So, I mean, it's and other than that, you know, what we teach and what we use uh, in our in our day to day business with our postings and our whatnot, it generates a ton of traffic that's very specific to what we need. And it's, um, I guess, what you're referring to as warm traffic, as opposed to just people that are coming to us totally not knowing, uh, you know, anything. This, this is very, we get the right people doing what we do. So I think it's a great discussion. I, um, I don't really have much to add in terms of uh, 
value other than some extremely good points as to why we don't use it. Yeah, Barry and Aaron. Yeah, I'm kind of with Mike. Um, <clears throat> not a lot to add to that, but you know, this is obviously why we don't use it. Um, you just got to know too much, and it's not our business to do that. You know, so go where, go where the people are. Don't try to, you know, go through the brain damage of roping them in to come to you. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're you're better off sending out an email deal of the week and selling property to your your buyers list than you are paying for paid traffic. Now, if you want to build that buyers list a little faster, you know, I could see this as a strategy of maybe Facebook where they come to your website from some maybe Craigslist and then you have a retargeting pixel on your website. That retargeting pixel then fires when they go to Facebook, they might see an ad for the deal of the week with some type of irresistible offer that expires. So you've got the urgency, you've got the scarcity. They're already warm because they already came to your, 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 uh, your site. Maybe that, that would work. Um, maybe. Again, you could experiment with it and see what your conversion rate is. Again, very, very tough. Uh, Eric Peterson had a drop off. But um, is there anything else we, we want to talk about as far as the irresponsibility of newbies getting into paid traffic and land investing? I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, well, let's move on to uh, another topic as we get into the dog days of summer. Uh, 110 here now, 105. By seven o'clock, I take a cold shower. I'm ready for bed. I'm just drained from the heat. Um, it's really rough. And what we're seeing is generally that summer slowdown. Um, sales might be slowing uh, because parents are, you know, getting ready for their summer vacations or their kids are going to sleepaway camp. You know, people are occupied with the beginning of summer and you could see some seasonality there. My question is, Tate Litchfield, are you seeing a slowdown? Um, let me look at the numbers real quick. Uh, no, we're not seeing a slowdown. We've had deals. We're moving property, moving inventory. Um, we're not buying as much as I'd like to be buying. It could be for a number of reasons, but... Um, you know, I, I do think that the business ebbs and flows. I've said it for years that certain areas are going to be hotter, you know, as far as demand than others at certain times of the year. And, um, you know, selling a piece of property right now in Arizona might not be as easy to sell something in the highlands of Colorado, right? Nobody wants to go camping on a piece of property when it's 115 out in the middle of the desert with no water, no air conditioning, no electricity, but all of a sudden, seven, 8,000 feet above sea level, sounding really, really enjoyable right now. So um, I'm not personally seeing a big slowdown. Um, normally June's not a very hard month for us, but um, the month's not over, so we might not hit our goals. So I don't know yet. All right, Mimi, what about you? How's, uh, how are sales, how are? Sales are good. Buying is a little slower than normal, but when I'm choosing my counties, I'm looking at the seasonality of sales. And the way I have them now, they counterbalance each other fairly well. So kind of like what Tate says, look at the seasonality of the counties you're in. Oh, so in August, summer is not a slow time for me usually. I just focus my time in a different area. Brilliant, brilliant. Barely and Aaron, what are you seeing out there? I'm um, having a little trouble buying right now. Um, just started to increase our mailings. Um, I added 10 a day to just try to bump the, you know, the quantity getting out there up a little bit. Um, we'll see if that works. Other than that, you know, I might try um, some pricing changes, but uh, we'll see how that goes right off the bat. But yeah, I'm a little bit of trouble buying right now, but I've seen, um, I've seen our, I don't know, I guess the market move to some of those higher elevation kind of states and everything. So, um, and that is somewhere we're trying to buy, but I think now that more uh, other people see the same thing, so they've also moved there. Um, so it might just make it a little bit more competitive for a market right now to try to buy and also to sell. So um, 
you know, we're dealing with uh, the people in our business also, you know, kind of doing the same thing. So um, might be time to be a little bit creative and, uh, you know, maybe not be contrarian, but um, try some creative approaches to both buying and selling in those areas as well as some others. All right. Zen Master, how about you? Um, well, I think it kind of brings up a really good point because as you said, with the temperature, even here in New England, uh, we, it's getting hot, right? So we're in the nineties yesterday and I think it makes us just as normal people a little more lethargic, right? I mean, we just don't want to do as much. So I think, I think this kind of all points towards the idea of, we always talk about the niche within the niche, the fact that we scale the business, right? We're all, we're all like land investing is what we're talking about. But then why we say we have this micro niche is that we don't do it, right? We build a team of people that are um, in many cases, you know, uh, they're more intelligent in the particular areas we hire them for. And they're actually more dedicated because that's their job. And so if these systems are underway, then you can remove some of that seasonality, I think, by consistency. So I think that that's it's a good thing to look at is like, yeah, you can experience seasonality in your business, but you probably experience it more if you're relying on yourself to do everything because you're going to want to take a vacation. You're going to want to go to the beach. You're not going to want to be doing all these things. So if you leverage um, uh, your business and you scale it and you use the tools we have in place, in place sorry, LG Pass or uh, Geek Pay or Land Modal, use these tools, uh, they're going to leverage your business and allow you to actually be lethargic and still make deals. So um, I don't know. I kind of think of it that way when you bring up, that question today because it is really hot around here and honestly I don't feel like doing a lot of things <laughs> it's my day off in the fight department and I want to go lay in the pool so uh yeah I mean but I have a team in place that's doing all the necessary processes so I, I kind of I don't know if that's the question you answer but I, I kind of feel that way when you uh, that's the kind of response I feel like saying when you bring it up I love it I, lo I love when you say it's, it's a team sport uh you know I was, I was listening to uh one of my favorite podcasts is Malcolm Gladwell revisionist history. So before he sort of gets into his whole thing, him and Adam Grant, Adam Grant wrote give and take. And um, he's like this, he's like the organizational psychologist of, you know, of our time and this young guy and just brilliant professor. And so they're talking about fit and how important it is to have these teams that, you know, fit and, um, and how, when you sort of, examine these small teams they're using google as an example the the most you know profitable teams are sort of these small two to four person teams and what was interesting about that model for them was well why do we then not hire in teams and why do we then individually sort of promote people why don't we just promote the entire team because the entire team is doing so well. It was, it was a really interesting um, subject. And a lot of it was just sort of corporate logistics, why they can't do that. But it sort of kind of gets you thinking about business in general and how important it is to have a really strong team. And uh, Mimi, this will be interesting to you. When they look at FAA safety, the most dangerous crews are the ones that fly for the first time together. That is the most dangerous time to be on a plane. You could take a crew that has been completely sleep deprived and they are flying more safely um, than a, a brand new crew. That's uh, so interesting. Yeah. And so I, can, I, yeah. can I say something? I will say in software development, we're selling teams. Now we sell in agile teams for, for a sell for a capability, right? If you're going to go build something, you bring in an entire agile team that's worked together that, that they know each other's, uh, how, you know, can work well together, know each other's skills, their um, strengths and weaknesses, and can help each other. Right, absolutely. Yeah. And um, so, I, you know, if you want to check out an interesting podcast, check that one out because they kind of debate each other. It's, it's really interesting. Uh, and they bring up the NBA, which I, I love. Uh, Scott Todd, what's going on with your seasonality? Um, I was just looking and, you know, we're, we're down a little bit, you know, from, uh, I mean, this is like the, this has been so far the slowest month of the year so far, but the month's not over with and, uh, we've had a good year so far. So sometimes you get those little bit, little dips and then the next month they shoot back up again. It's just something. And, you know, I know that when you're starting out, then, you know, you know, like when you're starting out, that little, little dip kind of hurts, but 
you know, when you've been doing it for a while, it's like, okay, that's it's just the way that it is. All right. Great. Great. Well, we're at that point now in the podcast where we get to put the Zen master on the spot and ask him for the tip of the week, a website, a resource, maybe a quote, a book, maybe something a book. actionable <laughs> where the art of that <laughs> listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. Mike Zena, what do you got? Wait a minute. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Scott. I just had to wait for Scott to remove himself from the screen because he just, he loves these quotes so much that I think that he gets captivated and then I just end anyway. So we kind of already talked about it. It was kind of, the, you know, this whole idea, I'm going to kind of, uh, kind of springboard off of land investing being a team sport because I, I say that quite a bit, but I, I really believe it. I think, you know, we all have these FUDs, right? These fears, these uncertainties and these doubts, right? And uh, those can cripple us, right? At times, especially in our in our business and not in our life as well. But, um, you know, when you have a team and you assemble people that are very skillful in their particular areas, then these fears, these uncertainties and these doubts begin to remove. I mean, and the fire department, you know, we have, um, we have teams that work well together. We all have a job. We all have a mission and, you know, one's inside the building fighting the fire. Then it's getting really hot and now um, it's unbearable. So all of a sudden there comes a hole in the roof and the heat and the steam is relieved and, and they can continue on. And so there's this whole process of working together in a team. And I think in land investing, um, another thing that's important is us as a team, meaning all of us here on this podcast, all of us part of the land geek, because, you know, this people that have FUDs, fears, uncertainty, and doubts when they come to the land investing, right? They come here and, uh, you know, they wonder if, um, you know, this is going to work, this and that, you know, and, and if they don't dedicate themselves, their time, their effort, and put, because it does take, I mean, it's a simple, like, Buy low, sell high. How hard can it be, right? It's a simple model, but there's micro processes that we all know can beat you down. But when you work with people that have, uh, you know, overcome those, right, then you begin to feel empowered. So I think we as a team, when I say the Land Geek, we are uh, a very strong team and we assist people in removing their fears, their uncertainty and doubts. So I think the whole idea of that team uh, sport really is huge. And I was thinking about what you said there. I realized that we have four key players in our land investing team. Now they may have some micro uh, VAs that work for them and help them with their individual areas, but there are four really good a level players that make up our team. And uh, I, I think that's interesting. I didn't think of that until you brought that up, Mark, with that case study you were talking about, but I just think that team sport, the whole idea, leverage it in all areas of your life. Right. If, uh, if you're not unsure, if you're unsure about something, you're not completely confident, then, you know, get some people around you that are. Why is these are the best friends I have right here in the virtual world? Because I surround myself with people who are better than I am. At what at what I'm trying to do? Because then I get better. So I I love it. I love that whole team aspect. Never been a big sports player, but I'm happy to be part of this team. See, I'm, I'm I finally made it to a team. You can come back now, mm -hmm. Scott. <laughs> Scott's Scott's, Scott's He's, afraid. Scott's on. Is he gonna come back? Did I scare him away? Uh, but land investing truly it's a team sport come on scott you like that one right <laughs> very good mike very good so if you if you want to join the next july flight school team and yes. you want to start taking action on this in real time with scott todd please schedule a call go to landgeek.com forward slash training get on a call with uh the zen master or scott bossman and let them walk you through uh how to eliminate the fuds of land investing in our uh, 14 week land intensive training class, which also includes the investors toolkit. Um, by the way, uh, people are starting to like dirt rich. We've got 77 Amazon reviews. And if you haven't gotten your copy yet, just go to the and, uh, forward slash dirt rich and, you know, get, get, uh, go there. You can order dirt rich. It's like two ninety nine on Kindle and, uh, get over $500 worth of bonuses with that Kindle book. The audio book is coming out. I'm working on it. And uh, so if you have listened to the book or listen to the book, if you've read the book, you like the book, please leave an Amazon review. Uh, send us a screenshot, support at thelandgeek.com. I'd love to send you a paperback copy out uh, from me signed and just to thank you. Please do that. And also the podcast needs some love. You got to subscribe. You got to rate. You got to review the podcast. Scott Todd is, not gonna, is just going to stop coming here we don't give them some love so please do so send us a screenshot support at thelandgeek.com with your podcast review we're going to send you for free the passive income launch kit our 97 dollar course so please do that tate are we good oh yeah this was a really 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 good podcast this week i hope everybody likes it i think so too uh mimi are we good we're good 
All right. By the way, uh, speaking of Mimi, she's coming to Scottsdale Boot Camp. We only have a few seats left. Go to thelandgeek.com forward slash boot camp and get registered. Uh, Mike, we good? No, we're great. We're great. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Bearland Aaron? Absolutely. All right. Scott, anything else? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. And uh, ready? One, two, three. Let Reno ring. Oh, my gosh. So, so me, I don't know if Mimi knows this, but we never really stop recording after the podcast. I didn't, is Aaron on like some sort of um, – are you on some sort of protest? No, no, no. You haven't been here in a while. Apparently, I'm the reason for the uh, – the jagged uh, <laughs> sign out. So I I abstain because of some slower internet. I don't know. I mostly I just don't want to be razzed by Scott Todd. I guess. I oh, that's that funny. Yeah, he do, he hasn't participated. I did notice. <laughs> abstaining, but in reality, he's not invited. <laughs> Man, that's cold. Scott, Scott was going to pick up his son from uh, camp in Pennsylvania, and he's going through Amish country. He's boxing me. He's like, I'm in Bearland Aaron country. I just saw a horse and buggy. <laughs> Scott. Mark, the, the, uh, we're driving through this. I'm driving through this town talking to you. It's, yeah. and it's like Mith Mifflinburg or something like that, Pennsylvania. And I'm driving. I'm like, you got to get – stop, stop. I got to stop. I got to go back because on the side of the road, you know, like the roadside attraction said it was the Buggy Museum. I'm like, the Buggy Museum, man, that sounds thrilling. <laughs> I have to tell you, though, I, I wish there was like an Amish country ca camp. I'd love to send my kids there for like two weeks. No t technology, no cars, just totally unplug – Get your hands dirty, build something, churn some butter. I think it's, it might be the they, way to go. Well, they we, do that on the East Coast. We send all our kids like to Asheville, North Carolina. We send them up to the, to the mountains in New York. They all go West Virginia and they're, they have to unplug. They do horseback riding, canoeing. It's kind of a big thing here. Send your kids away for two weeks to go do that stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I picked up the kids and the internet connection isn't that great out there. I picked up the kids and I'm driving back and my, my son's friend says, I think what I missed the most was the internet. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Mark, speaking of which, I've got an app you got to download, okay? All right, I'm going to get it. What are, what are we doing? What are we it, doing? It's called... It is called... Um, moment, M O M E N T. Moment. Okay. And what it does, you download it onto your phone. And what it does is every time you are on the phone, like you're getting screen time, it's recording your screen time in terms of the number of minutes that you've used. So, like today, I downloaded it this morning after I heard about this. I've used 35 minutes of screen time on my phone because now I'm self-conscious of it. But it tells me that I also have picked up my phone and hit the little button to turn it on 24 times today. Okay. Wow. So the average person heard this this morning. The average person is using their phone four hours a day. Yeah, I got to get this on my kids. It, and my the iPhone, our phone is 10 years old and we are already using it a quarter of our waking hour. And this app will help you know like how bad it is, how bad you're addicted to it. I love Whoa. it. I'm doing it. This I'm going to get all my husband and my I'm kids. Really, I'm really scared to use this. Yeah. I was just going to say, I, I, so, you know, what I've done is it, I told my wife, I'm like, that's it. I'm going to get better. So, I, I've got my iPad here, and I don't have it on there. <laughs> Doesn't that count? <laughs> you don't have it on there? You don't count the iPad? Well, it, my wife says it's cheating, but I'm like, this is I'm working on here. Yeah, I work on my iPad. 
Well, I'm, I'm to that's phone. totally cheating. Wait, totally wait, cheating. I'm looking at my phone all the time, but my wife's like, 35 minutes. It's not working. <laughs> 35 I'm minutes on the phone, three hours on the iPad. <laughs> on Does the it break iPad. it down? Does it break it down? Like, will it show phone time versus game time well, at all? If you put, no, it, it's, well, listen, here's what it doesn't do. Okay, just, just, so if you're talking on the phone, it does not count that against you. Okay, period. good. Okay. If you are listening to a podcast or audible, it does not count that against you. Okay. It counts it when that screen is turned on. Okay. And I'm you're looking put it on my family's app and not tell them. And then, Hey, pull it out tomorrow night at dinner. Pull, pull it out. Let's see what you guys did. That's wait it. a minute. Wait a minute. It says for technical reasons, moment needs to also track the places you go automatically yeah. track your screen oh. well just turn it off just turn that off don't if you're if you're untrustworthy uh you know of of Wait, the app, what, what? Of, the app. <laughs> of the app yeah if you're untrustworthy of yourself mike if you don't want the app to know where you've been because you're hiding I, something i think it already knows <laughs> yeah. um, listen you don't need an app you, you got a wife she knows where you are <laughs> okay. Even yeah. when you think she doesn't, she does. Oh, she knows. Oh, she knows. Yeah. That's right. I have a different app for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. Well, I'm going to go eat some leftover Chinese food. Um, were we going to talk about something? Did you mention something at the beginning of the podcast we were going to talk about afterwards? Oh, I mean, you don't, by the way, when we stop recording, Mimi, we don't really stop. So we always like to say goodbye. You're like, you like hang up. I'm like, that was really abrupt. So you can, you can, <laughs> you can hang off. Another Those man. Guys would, are so like, rude. They just hang up. I'll learn. I, I get it. You know, it's, it's okay. I'll learn. All right. Well, thanks everybody. And uh, see everyone next week.